you're wasting all the time Another hour gone, did you hear the chime? You're wasting all the time Recorded for Thursday, July 16th, 2020 Hello everybody, hey. I'm hey. Welcome to Wasting All the Time, a podcast season two. Ooh. This is episode 54, and I am your host, Dave. <gasps> but I am not alone in this endeavor, this improv comedy podcast endeavor. No, nay, in fact, you have heard the tenuous voices of my collaborators joining us as a guest. It's our friend Casey. The greatest indeed. Casey <laughs> is me. Welcome, Casey. Thanks. And our regular co-hosts, uh, we've got the person what's sitting nearest to him physically in the real world. It's Cody. Why, that's me, Cody. Hello, humans. Quite a distance away. It's John. Hi, I'm very far away. Hi, very far away. It's I'm Casey. The greatest. The greatest. Uh, I didn't know you had kids. <laughs> <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> and somewhat near Cody and Casey physically, but not with us this evening, is Jess. Mm. She'll be back another day. Mm. Okay, this is an improv comedy podcast comprised of segments, and we will be running right through them. I'll be towing the line and getting the input and chuckles and creative implications of my <laughs> cohorts along the way. So let's kick it off with a segment where I will espouse some sort of scientific type thing. And that's very clear. This is going to be um, talking about science and I have a little wheel of, <laughs> of randomness that's going to tell me what subject I'm going to talk about. So let's give that a spin, and I'm sure if you're not following along, that's entirely my fault, but just stick with it. I will become less manic when this is over. Okay, here we go. <laughs> the subject for this is forces of nature. Ooh. Nice. Let's begin. Get ready to learn because it's science, science time, time with, with Dave. Dave. That's right, it's science time, and we're talking about the forces of nature, one of the fundamental things that binds this universe together. We, of course, have the one that most people know about already, gravity. Gravity is a force that connects masses and <laughs> makes them want to get near each other, uh, absent other forces. Then you've got number two, You've got the strong nuclear force, which is the thing that actually keeps electrons bound to their atoms, their respective atoms, for the most part. <laughs> so they're spinning around like incredibly fast, but they don't go zooming off. They keep going in circles. And that's because of the strong nuclear force. Then you have the weak nuclear force, which is what causes radioactive materials to decay. Uh, and that's a creates like heat in the process and fun stuff like that and half-lives and all of that and then the final force the fourth force what was it i'm out of time what is it hold on what's the four gravity for a strong weak Ma electromagnetism <laughs> got it at the end it creates a heat <laughs> just one please <laughs> just the one <laughs> yeah uh just one heat Please. <laughs> <laughs> and could I get it to go? <laughs> so there you go. That was, uh, you know, when you have four things to talk about in one science time, there's not a lot of room to really explain it all. Not with that attitude. So, uh, it, it was a force of nature. <laughs> oh. <laughs> More like a survey, which is technically correct, but not at all funny. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> All right, that's enough of me being a blowhard. 
Let's move it on to the next segment. No, it's never enough. Upwards, downwards, forwards, backwards. I say we go fruit words. That's right. It's fruit words. This is a segment where we take two random words, an adjective and a noun, off of green and red cards, respectively. And we use the bizarre conjoined product of that selection and use that as inspiration for an improv scene. So I'm going to use the Handy Dandy Fruit Words app, which is available on the Android store, developed by our fantastic patron, Unexampled Salt. Let's draw the cards and see what we get. Why? It's Vested Buckeye. <laughs> vested? Buckeye. Vested, as in clothed, robed, oh, wearing vestments. Okay. okay, okay. Vested Buckeye, a name given to several American trees and shrubs of the same genus. As the horse chestnut. The larch. <laughs> so, a clothed tree, essentially. Vested buckeye. And here we go. So, guys. No, hold still. Oh. Uh, well, I Sorry. Was, I, no, I was just... I, I know I'm new here, so I, I don't mean to speak out of turn. But since yeah. we were... I, they brought me in specifically to be like, bring fresh new ideas. And I think the way we're going to save the trees is to make them relatable. And what do people love? Dressing up. Sex. S yes. O okay, oh. we'll table that. Oh. But yes, do uh. I, no, I don't want to put you down. We are all our own gods and goddesses. That's true. <laughs> so your idea is valid. But we, 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 I want to make the, the trees, they want to be, they're going to be pretty. And then people will okay. want to save them. What do you think? Go. You know, I, I think he's on to something because, you know, down at the college, they have that thing they do every year where they dress up the tree like whoever is the dean at the moment. And that oh, tree has uh -huh. been there for like a hundred years. Oh, that, do they dress it in sexy clothes? <laughs> well, they dress it to look like the dean, whoever is the dean at the time. So um, are there <sighs> sexy deans? I mean, I think sometimes. I, I don't know. I, I've El never met. I'm just asking. Elbow patches are sexy, guys. Come on. It's like you all have, we all, not to yuck your yum. You might like elbow patches. You might like tweed. We're not here to judge, okay? Oh, okay. What if we take um, it a step further? Instead of just human clothing, we also give the trees tattoos. Okay. I like where you're going. Huh. Like, like, you know, we take a palm tree and it says mom, or we take like a ficus and it's got born to ride. Big breasted woman. Oh, what? That's a good list. Sorry. I, no, I. So it's a mom uh, tree. Because you said do, palm tree and then mom. Yeah. Trees, I agree with you, trees boss. Trees have moms. Do trees have moms, though? Is they're, that a thing? They're progenitors. Uh, technically, fertilization takes place. Sometimes the tree swings both ways <laughs> at the same time, but other times they don't. <laughs> Not to yuck any tree's yums, but that's what I know. Could we pierce a tree's nose? Uh, <laughs> <do> they, <laughs> I'm trying to imagine a nose. I'm not a botanist, Stephen. That's I'm, clear. Uh, I'm not an arborist. What if we... I'm a we could, sex therapist. <laughs> <laughs> so you know a lot about the tree's nuts. Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah, ch the horse chestnut. Yeah. Uh, I think this clothing thing, the tattoos, the piercings, I think that's all a good idea, I think. Uh, how do we sell it to the chancellor? <laughs> okay, this was my plan, right? So we go to the chancellor and we're like, hey, you are dressed really nice. Wouldn't you want other things dressed nice too? To William, stay a hooker. To, so what? What? Yeah. So <laughs> we 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 could say like make sure to dress up your trees. That way you can take the people's fees. Because he, you know, he's a chancellor, so he's trying to get like taxes and stuff. <laughs> so we work both sides of it. Okay. 
I'm so just I mean, spitballing I, here. Uh, sorry. Correct. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the dean is probably going to already be on board because of his history. Is that is that correct? Uh, I think I think probably the dean is going to be uh, going to react positively. Yeah, um, especially if, I mean, like if we uh, maybe take him out to a grove and and we've already got several of the trees dressed up like him, you know, because you know it can only be a flattering experience to uh, walk into a secluded. Uh, forest grove and find that um that all the trees there uh are dressed in your same exact outfit i mean that's that seems like something people would like it's so calming look uh could we branch out no no pun intended uh could we branch out a little bit from the dean look uh because i've got a bunch of costumes at home i'd like to try out on some trees yeah what do you got lay it on us I've got a, uh, I've got a, 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 a nurse. I've got, um, a police officer. I've got, um, another nurse, but of a different kind. And I've got a doctor as well. Um, I've got a, a race car, you know, like the, the big jumpsuits they wear, race car drivers. Okay. Um, okay. But it's got some strategic cutouts. Which actually would probably be handy with the limbs of the tree. Um, they do have a lot of them. De- depending. Um, am I revealing more about myself? A little bit. A little, little bit. A little bit. I, um, you have read our chapter's um, sexual harassment policy, right? <laughs> Why don't you remind me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yes, so just, I have. You have, yes. Uh, so yeah, you're telling me. I'm telling you that uh, you need to stop showing us these <laughs> pictures. Uh, Ding! You <laughs> 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 those the tree. Oh, so you know about trees, nuts. You know about the nuts. <laughs> Fucking you like trees nuts? <laughs> trees nuts. <laughs> trees nuts. Uh, wow, that was very strange. I liked it. I'm glad I was there for it. That was fun. Actually. But it was a vested buckeye. Yes. Mm, tech- fun no fact. I just oh. completed my uh every two years sexual harassment training today. Ah, oh, I need to do that. Dang, did you pass? Nice. Yes. <laughs> having fun all right well with that out of the way we are gonna move it right along to the next segment that's right the music don't lie. <laughs> it is Twitter Shins Rapid Ball. Yeah. Where I will take the top three tweets on the internet. I will read them to the people on this podcast who are listening to me speak in this moment. <laughs> and all of these tweets that, ah, dare I omit it. Oh, daren't thou? I daren't. The end in a question mark. <laughs> Ooh, parse that syntax, baby. <laughs> Uh, they will provide answers in a rapid ball-like way. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's get things started with tweet number three. From Shinjini Das at Speaker Shinjini. Retweet if you want to be your own boss. Cody. Well, there are several problems with me being my own boss, Shinjina. One of them is my boss. <laughs> damn it! Damn. One of them is my boss always knows when I'm calling in sick. Uh, there are several other problems. Uh, sexual harassment is a very big deal around the office when I'm my own boss. Oftentimes, my paperwork is late, and my boss doesn't believe my excuses. But more. To the point, I would have to use Twitter to retweet that, and by God, I would rather work for myself for a hundred years than touch that little blue bird. You are your own worst employee. (laughs) John! Well, um, having been now king of my small principality for uh, 25 years, I Hmm. imagine that I am, in fact, my own boss. 
Um, and so I, I shall do the thing with the treating and the rees, um, for your pleasure, uh, <laughs> and mine as well. I am the king after all. And, um, yes, so we'll uh, go down the torture chamber, find this little bird thing you want so badly, and we'll uh, ship it on over for you. I'm sure I can have one of my people do that. King of a principality and prince of a kingdom, Ooh. Casey. So here's the thing, babe. We live in a fast-paced world, right? I ain't got time. We don't got time for emails. We don't have time for SMS, text messages. We don't have time for posting people on Facebook. That is a long time ago. So what we do is we do tweets. And when we tweet, you become your own boss. Because now we know who is tweeting and who is in charge. Because you got to stay up on these things. Do you understand? If you don't, I don't have time for you. But who is tweeting really? All right, moving on to tweet number two from David Sims at David L. Sims. Lol, it's hailing? What is this, London in April? Casey. Okay, now that we live in this fast paced world, it ain't just random men anymore. It is hailing men. It is hailing men. It's hailing, it's hailing everybody. It's hailing humans in general. So we gotta take advantage of that. So to take advantage of that, what we're gonna go ahead and do is grab all the things that are hailing, and we grab them and we send them out to our customers. Because what do our customers want? <laughs> Product. What do we have? Product. Hail men. Raining women. The end. Cut. Print. That's a wrap. That's right. It's no longer raining men. It's hailing <laughs> men. John. Well, I mean, as, as much as I would love for it to be, you know, <clears throat> April in, in London, uh, because that would mean that I was, I was the king of England and not a, uh, you know, a small, um, <laughs> you know, uh, area that um, proceeds from the center of my house and out to my property line. Um, <laughs> I'm afraid that it is not uh, April. Nor uh, in London. Uh, also, I have outlawed hail, so what you are seeing outside cannot possibly be hail uh, because it simply is illegal. Uh, and no one would dare question my rule. Uh, no one does dare question my rule. I've killed all the people. Um, and so um, I expect what's happening is there are giants. Uh, living in the mountains that are throwing ice cubes. And if you'd like me to take care of that, I can, because I am the king. You just have to ask. <laughs> ah. Certainly among the dead of this king have been some property surveyors. <laughs> that much is clear. <laughs> and Cody. Oh, hello. I did not see you there. I was busy looking at the hail. You see, hail contains the essence of the sky. And the sky is what we melt into our dishes. So it does not matter if this is hail from London in April. Because when we melt it, and when you drink it, you are drinking the sky. So perhaps you wish you were London in April and that is what this dish will do for you. It will bring you to the rainy city, which is not Seattle. It is London in April. And then you will know the beauty of this dish, which is the sky in your mouth. Mm. He is back, baby. <laughs> tweet number one. The best tweet that ends in a question mark mm -hmm. or an interrogative point. Bang. Let's take a look at Kayla stars emoji giveaway pinned stars emoji at virtual ACNH. Anyway, are people interested in robot heroes? Cody. Kayla, you have stars in your name like there are stars in the sky like I see stars in your eyes. These robot heroes, they do not have the soul for the cooking. They cannot flip the flapjack. 
like I can. They cannot scramble your eggs like a human man. So I ask you this. Do you love robots? Because they do not love you. They do not have a soul. They do not have a heart. They do not have a whisk made from platinum like I do. So, Starry Kayla, I ask you this. Maybe next time you think of a robot, you will instead think of me whisking your eggs. And you will love me and not the robot. Be gone, I'm done with you. You wouldn't have that platinum to make a whisk if you didn't have stars in your eyes. <laughs> Casey! Okay, Kayla, babe, here's what's going on. You can't just be giving away stars. Okay, so people want robots. So what do they want? They want robots, they want... <laughs> People who are not like robots. So you're just giving these things away, and that's the problem. So what do we want to give the people? We want to give we want to give the people exactly what they want, which is robots and things that aren't like robots. So what's our product? Robots. And <laughs> switching up the order because reasons. Finally, it's John. All right, now listen, Kayla, if that's really your name. I need you to let me know about these robot heroes. I had one come by. Uh, a few years ago, and it was terrible threat to the kingdom. It was a terrible uh, ordeal for everyone involved, um, especially the robot, because he was destroyed. Destroyed. I say again, destroyed, because I'm the king of this castle. <laughs> and I say whether or not robots are allowed, and they are not allowed, this is a high fantasy setting. <laughs> not, not your tawdry little rocket ship book. <laughs> And you'll keep your robot heroes away from here, or at least right outside the clearly marked property lines, or we will have trouble. <laughs> I will take my robot rocket ship to the stars, where I will be my own boss. Mm. This has been Twittershins Rapid Balls. <laughs> wow. I, I just absolutely had to capture Casey's quote. So people want robots. What do they want? They want robots. So what do they want? People who are not like robots. <laughs> God damn brilliant. Uh, that was businessman in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> With the shoulder heard, pads and the jacket. I heard the little bit of, uh, yeah. Cocaine. Yeah. A little bit of ex, uh, leftover cocaine uh, going out. Yeah. 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 It's allergies. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> so with the rough ears and I, oh, I love the Platinum Whisks. One of my favorite indie bands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fun. <laughs> that was great. All right. From one segment to the next, it is time for what day is this? let's talk about it it's national personal chef day now caveat i will say that five years ago today we talked about national personal chef day and i did read from the national day calendar <laughs> however once i was done reading about what days it was we decided we didn't want to do a scene and we moved on so let's give it another go five years better here we go <laughs> national personal chef day each year on July 16th, National Personal Chef Day recognizes the dedication and hard work of personal chefs across the United States. There's a difference between a personal chef and a private chef. A private chef usually works exclusively for one client mm. and typically lives in a person's home or on the property. It's a thing? A personal chef may have many clients, run their own business, or work for a company. <laughs> The other option. The services, oh, it's, it's very much a thing. Yeah. Wow. For sure. I just need to learn to cook better. Fuck. Mm -hmm. um, get to know some rich people. Working on it. <laughs> the services a personal chef provides may include preparing meals in the client's homes. Giggity. Or delivering meals already prepared. That's not a chef. <laughs> That's catering. Is that Meals on Wheels? They may also <laughs> create a meal plan according to dietary needs or the client's preferences. Ooh, prefer. Clients then follow instructions provided by the chef for heating up the meals. Some what? personal chefs offer catering services as well. Since being a personal chef is a competitive business, Apparently. experience and training is necessary. While not all personal chefs attend a culinary program, <laughs> they do have years of experience and have honed their skills in the trade. 
The days can be long, including shopping, preparation, and cleanup. A dedicated chef with several clients will spend long hours on their feet. The day acknowledges the hard work and often long, lonely hours a chef will put into their craft. Most dangerous job. Often their days require additional research for clients with allergies or special diets. However, their passion for cooking and bringing nutritious, delicious meals to the table keeps them striving to keep creating in the kitchen. The celebration is dedicated to personal <laughs> chefs with the drive to keep growing their skills and their business. Some celebrate this holiday in February of each what? year, but fuck them. Fuck them! How to observe National Personal Chef Day. Fuck them! For anyone striving to become a personal chef or run their own business, <laughs> this day is for you. Pat yourself on the back, dick. If you know someone interested in becoming a personal chef, encourage them. Be their taste tester. Thank a personal chef you know for the outstanding work. Give them a shout out or a recommendation. <laughs> Use hashtag National Personal Chef Day to share on social media. The United States Personal Chef Association, USPCA, founded National Personal Chef Day. Wow. Not going to lie, 100% be their personal taste tester. Sounds like bullshit code for make them work for exposure. Oh, oh <laughs> will you cook me seven course dishes? I'll be your taste tester. <laughs> it's like if you have a roommate who's trying to be a personal chef, it's like, don't worry, dude, I'll totally be your taste tester. So just like make whatever and I'll eat it. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Then they eat it and they're like, it's okay. Let's go try again. Tomorrow night, same time. <laughs> Get paid in Yelp reviews. Jesus. <laughs> that is blasphemy of the highest order. So, hey, Carl, like, I, I know <laughs> the, um, the, the rent situation is a little weird right now. <laughs> uh, you haven't really been paying it. And I was yeah. just figuring we might be able to work out a way that you could kind of pay rent. And I was, if do you have any special skills or something that you could contribute? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm I'm working on honing my skills. Okay, and it's gonna take some years because I didn't go to a culinary school. Um, I'm gonna be a chef, but not like in a restaurant. I want to be like a personal chef and then be like uh, just do a personal level of service as a chef well, I mean, like, and so uh, I need some time I need some forgiveness on the rent well no that, it's cool though because me uh, Lyle and Chaz are what? all persons and you could be our chef and that could like help you in training and also help you live here what do you think so like you would I I would cook for you and you would pay me. No, no, no. The the you, we don't And then I would be able to give that to you to pay rent? Oh, we whoa, that's weird. Yeah, we I guess we could. Lyle, what do you think? I don't have any money. Lyle, Chaz, get in here. What? Oh. Hey. Cuz I'm not going to just do this for experience here and here. <laughs> no, I was no. watching Invader I mean, Zim. What do you want? So, he's going to cook us food to live here. Who? Chaz? No, no, Chaz just lives here. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like if you asked me to uh, cook the food, it would go bad. Uh, you know, it's, it depends what you cook and how you store it. Uh, well, you know, it's just uh, the fact that, you know, I have my spore collection. Uh, and, uh, oh. you know, it just, I feel like uh, maybe me. Handling everyone's food would be a bad idea. Yeah, but, I could maybe use your help for some fermentation projects I have in mind, but mostly, poison. yeah, don't touch. Don't the you stuff. ferment weed? I do. Oh. I do do that. It um, so far all the rats have died, <laughs> but uh, but that probably just means it's really good. Yeah, it's cool. We're not. Yeah, rat. your your cannabis kimchi is really good. <laughs> Can't oh, you, you ferment that? weed? Yeah. Well, I think so. You can ferment yeah. anything. Okay, so guys, yeah. look, I'm going to be honest. I, I mean, I'm kind of into the idea. Okay. 
because uh, I could cook and learn how to cook for different people with different needs, dietary or otherwise. Cool. No, that's pretty much it, dietary. Okay. And then... Um, I like vinegar. Little... Oh, oh, okay. I'll better make a note. Chaz likes vinegar. Uh, oh, okay, well, I before I express <laughs> my concern, maybe we'll go around the table and you tell me what your, your needs are. Um, uh, uh, you? Well, I need, I need to eat. Oh, that's good. Cause if I don't, I don't have energy to fuel my body. Oh, so if you could that's, make me yeah. food. Okay. I would need it. Any, any known allergies? I know a lot of allergies. Like some people can't have peanuts. Some people can't go in the grass. I oh, thought that was weird. So sad. I wonder, yeah. could you be allergic to air? <laughs> I mean, I'm not, but it's just like, uh, is that a thing? I hope not. Okay. Because then you'd just well, die, wouldn't you? I, I, oh, yeah, I guess. Unless they did surgery or something. Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah, I know a lot of allergies. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to write all those down, but thank you. Okay. And then, uh, and you? Who? Which one of us are you pointing at? I, I'm a, you. I'm a little blurry. It's Lyle, dude. That one, the blurry one. Oh, okay, I'm Lyle. Lyle. Yeah, that's me. Chaz, and the other one that lives here. Yeah, I do. Uh, no, Chaz lives here. We all live here. Oh God, <laughs> and the, I'm already doubting myself. No, you gotta believe in yourself because I believe in you. Do you have any dietary needs? <sighs> Or allergies or nutrition advice? I hope not. What do you think when you look at me? Uh, I want to live here still. Um, uh, I want to be your personal chef. Guys! That's what I think when I look at you. Oh, I have a personal chef! Not yet, dude. He wants to! We haven't clinched the deal. Fuck, can I clinch your deal? <laughs> uh, I can, uh, definitions need to be, I need things to terms to find, but probably, uh, okay, here's, here's, here's my, here's my issue. I'm allergic to eggs. I'm allergic to garlic. I'm allergic to gluten. I'm allergic to moss. Not really so relatable to cooking. Uh, um, for what you would be cooking me, that's very. Very pertinent. Okay, so I no, I can't cook any of those things because I'm allergic. I'm allergic to ground nuts. I'm also allergic to tree nuts. <laughs> I'm allergic to oils uh, of all kinds. <laughs> um, I'm allergic to leafy vegetables and also uh, oh, root vegetables. Oh, that's okay. sad. Okay. That's sad. Um, kind of. But basically, if you want some gluten-free crackers. <laughs> I could plate those for you. You, uh, you couldn't. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you ferment uh, weed? I, I heard you could do that. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> and we just keep John around to fix our computers. <laughs> 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 oh, that was funny. That was good. Oh, so yeah, there you go. That's National Personal Chef Day given its due diligence. <laughs> if only five years later. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Speaking of due diligence, it's time to move it right along to the improv game of the week. Yay. <laughs> This is the Improv Game of the Week. This is the segment of the show where we pick a specific improv game to try to play. Sometimes it's a new one to us. Sometimes it's an old familiar. A horse chestnut, if you will. Okay. Um, that only halfway worked. All right. <laughs> Today we've got a new game that I got from <laughs> the Improv Encyclopedia. This game is called Rhymes. Oh, no. 
Well, scene, uh, have fun, guys. <laughs> and, uh... Scene played in verses. The idea is that the first player offers a line and the second player rhymes to that. Why? Then the second player offers another line with which the first player needs to make a rhyme. Players that hesitate or forget to rhyme die, quote unquote. What? And are replaced by other players. The idea is to keep the story going, so players that can't find a good rhyme that would advance the story better die than screw up the story. You bastard. All right, so how about we have uh, John and Cody start? Okay. okay. He said your name first. Go ahead. And then Casey will be the next one to enter. Sounds good to me. Once someone fails and dies. I swear to- ah, good peasant, why do you approach? You see, my lord, my residence has a roach. The exterminator couldn't deal with him. Well, I'll send out my knight named Jim. <laughs> Forsooth, um, how big a roach are we speaking of? About the size of a cat that you could wear as a glove. Also, it seems to spit a kind of acid. Uh, King's dead. dead. King's dead. King's dead. <laughs> King's dead. Long live the king. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that seems a bit rancid. Huh? What do you plan on doing about it? Um, I thought I would leave now. Roaches! <laughs> I was going to say smash it, and that is not a, uh... <laughs> hello, I'm the knight named Jim. Uh, hello. Well, hey there, Jim. Why such a bellow? Are you going to do something about this pest? Ah, certainly, certainly, ere I beat my <laughs> chest. I'm a brave knight, and this roach of some report is... No concern of mine. Well, that's just fine. Just <laughs> get it done. <laughs> I will, and in one. How? I've used my longsword to chop it in twain. Whatever, it's all the same. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want your money now? Bastard, right. Dry- Twain? Oh, yeah. Same I, I would like it. <laughs> oh, no, I, I'm dead. <laughs> <laughs> I would like it and how. Damn, can't collect from a dead guy. <laughs> <laughs> you there, will you accept my... Uh, will you accept the responsibility of my wage? I, I fear I must, although I warn you of my age. <laughs> Uh, it's quite advanced, and uh, I've no retirement set by. Well, that's uh, an all-too-common thing for a mage. Do I lie? <laughs> I don't think I do, but all the same, I would like a bag of gold for my duty. <laughs> well, I suppose there's no arguing with... A big man who's feeling looty. Oh! (laughs) Here is your gold, brave knight. Uh, Try not to spend it all in one place. Well, now that you're holding this heaping sack in my face, (laughs) I do feel a bit guilty for looting, as you say. So you'll leave me my gold and just go away? Ooh. What's even iambic pentameter? You fuck. <laughs> <laughs> that would be fabulous news, my uh, brave Sir Knight. Uh, I'm not <sighs> sure I'm just ready just so this night. <laughs> uh, let me keep the gold and sleep with it under my pillow. Uh, well, uh, (laughs) very well, uh, I'll cast a spell to make the fog billow. What the fuck? (laughs) And hide away the gold where you'll never find it again. 
Drat! Already it has escaped where it was in... I'm dead! (laughs) It is I, the King's Chancellor, and you are under arrest, mage! (laughs) Really? An old man of my advanced age? (laughs) Fuck you. (laughs) Be gone, Chancellor. Magic has won the day again. Aha, but you did not count on this being the end. (laughs) Your crimes are too numerous for the crown to ignore. Trust me, Chancellor, show yourself the door. <laughs> oh, sassy mage. You don't want to go up against the power that I yield. The only thing you have is a spoon that you wield. We're going to bring the gods and we're going to lock you up forever. That <laughs> will happen, my good sir. <gasps> Never. <laughs> You don't say. All right. (laughs) (laughs) You did. (laughs) Chief God, bring this corpse to the dirt. I would do it, but it's my back. It's hurt. (laughs) (laughs) So could we grab some other troops to do it for me? You are ridiculous. Fuck you. I'm a dead. Ah! I couldn't, but over here, and if you would implore me, Mm. I could take this corpse, Uh, but then again, that's your job. Well, if you take a look at it, it's just not what I want to do, Rob. (laughs) (laughs) So take your lower status and get it done. (laughs) Private. Uh, Hi, I guess I will, and I'll do it in one! (laughs) I fling the body out into the field where it lay. Oh, okay, but here's the thing. It is the middle of May, (laughs) so the body's gonna stink pretty bad. Yes, like any dead body... Would have or have. (laughs) Take that, (laughs) Grammar. But if we cover it with a thin layer of dirt... Oh, uh, oh, I die. (laughs) (laughs) I guess I'm king now with the power I did flirt. And I will rule over this principality (laughs) with a firm, gloved hand and bring about the end times just like my mother (laughs) demanded. And now we're all dead. The end. It feels so easy on the outset. You're like, no problem. All I think of it was a word. And you said me, and I was like, literally the only thing I can wor- I can think of to rhyme that is the word P. <laughs> yeah. And so I just started a sentence and went, nope, that's it. That's the end. No well, other words rhyme. You know, what's, you know what's great about this game is that you can just start talking <laughs> I, until you think of a word yeah. and then work your way That's through. That's what I did. And by the time I got to ridiculous, literally the only word I could think of was P. And I was like, That's so dumb. <laughs> took it. Yes. I used to be a poet till I took an arrow to the knee. Stephen. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Uh, that, was, that was a lot of fun. That was that a was. great game. I, uh, I was surprised that I uh, got as far as I did <laughs> with my wizard bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, then to, fun. and then to die because I forgot, oh, right, I have to keep talking <laughs> for the ride. <laughs> oh. I love this game because it has failure, but it feels uh, just doable enough. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, that yeah. it's like, this is achievable. I don't feel bad about when I do die. Yeah, you know? yeah. 
We'll definitely have to bring that one back again. That's that was a lot of fun. I know I definitely felt like I took the easy road out by just giving you a name. But <laughs> <laughs> hey, fair is fair. <laughs> Wasn't expressly forbidden. Exactly, Steven. It's the failing is the fun. And that's something that we've run into with like other other games where we 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 get so in our heads about not wanting to fail that we end up like not failing or whatever. Yeah. And then it's what was the yeah, fun in that? Yeah. We got, mm. I technically did the scene right. Well, fucking great. Right. Like, good job. All right. Well, that's about all the time we have for wasting this week. I'd like uh, to take an opportunity to let our guests talk a little bit about what they're up to. This is not an official what have you been up to segment. Uh, Casey, if people enjoyed your contributions to this episode, where could they find you doing other things? Yeah. So I, there's a couple places you can find me. One is youtube.com slash mid tier entertainment that's a uh show me and rook do together or me and cody do together (laughs) and um it's a fun gaming no it's a comedy gaming podcast it's more comedy than it is gaming we're just having fun playing games messing around having a good time uh the other place you could find me is at twitch and my name is at the wild seven so go ahead and check me out there too. Throw me a follow and come hang out and have a blast. Again, it's just me having a fun time. And that's kind of it's, what I do. Very it's cool. a ton of fun. Very nice. All right. Thanks for joining us this week and last. Yeah, it's a dude. I love it. It's always fun. I always have a, a great time. Um, and I, yeah, thank you for inviting me. It's always, a, it's always a lot of fun. All right. And if there was anything else about this episode that you liked in particular, please head on over to wastingallthetime.com slash vote to let us know about it. We will be taking all of the suggestions that come in throughout the year, cobble them together for your review at the end of tier, and we'll have you all vote on the top 10. And then we'll present the top 10 for all to reminisce and enjoy. Mm. Yay! Delicious. If there's anything that you hated, uh, well, we have an outlet for that as well. Go to the cesspool, (laughs) hellhole, whatever else (laughs) shitstorm that is twitter.com and send all of your hate to at Jay Hansen himself. That is a Twitter account that no one will reply to you through. And that's just a good way to get it out. You know, it's kind of like writing down your problems on a piece <laughs> of paper and then burning it. It's not actually helpful, but it is a thing you can do. Okay, that's it. Until next time, my name is Dave. I'm John. I'm Cody, that's me! And I'm Casey at twitch.tv slash thewild7 and youtube.com slash midtier entertainment. Make sure to hit that bell so you don't miss an update. The greatest. <laughs> <laughs> and we wasted all of the time. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Bon voyage. But... Well, I had fun. Good night, folks. Congratulations. You've made it to the end of another episode of Wasting All the Time, a podcast. If you enjoyed this show, then please consider subscribing on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, or follow us on Spotify. If you really enjoyed the show, then head on over to patreon.com slash timewastepod and become a supporter of our time-wasting efforts. Now, that was a lot of things I just threw at you, so if you forget all that, just head on over to wastingallthetime.com, and there we have all the answers. Also, can I interject? I love Dave's liquid you on do. <laughs> I, no, it's good. I like it. Do you diligence? I do. You, yeah, I, it's second nature. It's, as well, it should be. It's elegant and classy. And if they don't like it, fuck them. But not in the good way. Yeah. When we were all kids uh, in my family, we were all little still. Um, my dad would say, 
new. Like, ah. yeah, that's a new car <laughs> instead of new. And he would correct us when we said new. Oh. You know, he'd be like, oh, it's, it's not spelled N O O, it's N E W. New. I guess technically that is a way and to interpret it. That's one of those things that just sticks with you forever. Sticks with you? And. <laughs> It became a thing in the in the family. We'd say, <laughs> you know, um, and and here we are now. I don't even think about it. It just happens. Awesome. Well, I like All right, it. Glad you like I it. I do. This is a true fact.